Coming up on this edition of Bearcat Student Media News, who gets paid the most here at SAM? We delve into the public record and break it down for you. Also, SHSU broke ground giving Huntsville residents a chance to see the stars. Find out when a new out-of-this-world facility is coming to Sam Houston State University. Live from the Dan Rather Communications Building on the campus of Sam Houston State University, this is Channel 7 News. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Talia Harrell. And I'm Chasmine Parker. Welcome to this edition of Bearcat Student Media News. Governor Greg Abbott's office recently sent a memo to state agencies and public universities saying they must stop a certain hiring practice. Bearcat student media's Taisha Ray Wooten tells us what that is and also gets reaction. Texas Governor Greg Abbott's office has warned state agencies and public universities that these are diversity, equity, and inclusion hiring practices that support groups who have been historically underrepresented in the workplace is illegal. In a memo written last month, Abbott's chief of staff told agency leaders that using EDI policies violates federal and state employment laws and hiring cannot be based on factors other than merit. In my opinion, what the governor's office is saying is absurd. Um, diver diversity, equity, and inclusion, or as you may know, DEI, policies are not legal, nor should they ever deem illegal. During my time at Sam Houston State University, as a woman of color, even with the university exercising diversity hiring practices, I didn't feel well represented with the faculty and staff. Some of the groups underrepresented or discriminated against in the past in the workplace include, but are not limited to, racial minorities, women, the LGBTQ plus community, veterans, and those with disabilities. Abbott's chief of staff says, these incentives discriminate against a certain demographic group outside of the groups we just mentioned. It's protecting those people. It just it's being put in place to protect a group, not to kick a group out or to discriminate against a, a certain group. A spokesperson for the governor's office says both federal and state law make equity quotas illegal. I don't think there should be an end to the DEI policies because I feel like there should be something in place that protects minorities, women, all people of color, you know, I think there should be something in place that, you know, that help us and protect us from being discriminated when it comes to applying for the job. Others support the governor's position. Many believe that merit should be the only factor used when making the hiring decision. We reach out to the university leaders here at Sam Houston State University to learn more about what changes may be coming to the university in light of the governor's new warning. However, they declined to comment. From the campus of Sam Houston State University, Tasha Wooten, Bearcat Student Media. So who are the highest paid Bearcats? Bearcat Student Media's Fatima Maldonado scoured the publicly available annual salaries report and has more. It may be no secret the president of Sam Houston State University makes the most money, but just how much money does Dr. Elisa White get paid? Based on figures published on the university's website, White's total yearly compensation comes to $559,900. What? Wow. Wow. The pay of the president is way higher than I expected. I think it's fair. Why? Because the president has to oversee everything going on in this campus. And this campus isn't small. I mean, you got buildings all over the place. So uh, that's a lot of overseeing you have to do. This figure includes housing, cell phone, and car supplements. I think she gets paid too much. Why? Uh, we don't see what she's doing, but I mean, I think the first reason they would say that is because we don't really ever see the president, whereas we see our professors and doctors and every other pro teacher here. Uh, but I mean, she's doing a good job as president. So. According to the university's website, the highest paid full-time employees for the 2023 fiscal year include the Dean of College of Osteopathic Medicine, Thomas Moore, with a base salary totaling $550,008. Head football coach Casey Keeler, who receives a base salary of $430,000. 
Provost and Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs Michael Stevenson receives $330,000 a year, while Athletics Director Bobby Williams pulls down $233,500 annually. Former men's head basketball coach Jason Hooten received a base salary of $232.08. Head men's baseball coach John Siriani and head women's basketball coach Raven Justice both make a base salary of $206,016 a year. The average non-medical dean salary is about $210,000 a year. They do a lot. I know they are busy. So, I mean, it's a, it's a fair enough number for them to get paid for what they do. Yeah. Finally, the highest paid non-medical department professor is accounting professor Ronald Daigle, making $181,188 annually. These figures may not include other sources of compensation these individuals may receive. From the campus of Sam Houston State University, Fatima Maldonado, Bearcat Student Media News. Recently, Interdue Texas presented a grant of $255,000 to Sam Houston State University. The money will support the installation of a solar-powered electric vehicle charging station on the university's campus. The initiative aligns with Sam Houston's commitment to reducing its carbon footprint and promoting renewable energy. So far, we, um, we were doing the, the concrete that was done by the um, construction management faculty of the Sam Houston. And then what we did was we brought the panel from the storage area down to over here and then we installed all the ground racks and then installed the solar panels on top of that. I think it means the next big step and the energy that they have here. Um, Energy helped us out a lot with giving us the money and the funds to do this, and it also taught us, the students, a lot about it. Interdue Texas representatives, along with SHSU faculty, staff, and students, attended the check presentation ceremony to mark the occasion. The grant was issued through Interdue's Environmental Initiatives Fund. The initiative is expected to be completed by July. At the center of campus, SHSU students come to enjoy the full collegiate experience. Last Wednesday, the Department of Student Activities hosted the annual Student Organization Fair. As students pass the Parker Plaza on the rush to campus, they could stop to interact with their peers. Representatives from various diverse organizations presented information about themselves to get involved. Many tables were filled with organizations that presented items to draw students the fair presented the chance to be engaged, involved, and connect students on campus. The sky's the limit for opportunities here at SHSU. The Physics and Astronomy Department welcomes a new addition, a gift written in the stars. Bearcat Student Media's Macy McShann has the story. The SHSU Department of Physics and Astronomy held a groundbreaking ceremony March 24th to celebrate the construction of the Domini Observatory. Barbara Dominey donated money for the project to the college in honor of her late husband and alumnus, Sam Dominey. Sam attended SHSU as a physics major in the 50s where his passion for the celestial was born. During his time here, he managed to find a telescope from the 1800s in a closet while working as a TA and refurbished it for students to use. This telescope was also at the ceremony and the physics department intends to display the historic instrument proudly. The new observatory was an idea born from both a way to honor her husband and also to ensure everyone is able to see the stars, including those in wheelchairs. I don't believe that there's another observatory around that's going to have for the handicapped to be able to view the heavens. So that's my wish for the future. This access is not available in most observatories and the progress SHSU is making did not go unnoticed by the university's president. We will be a destination not only for astronomy and getting kids excited about science, but also that focus on accessibility. The observatory will include a domed, retractable ceiling that's wheelchair accessible as well as a wheelchair lift. The Domini's wishes and vision, the observatory will accomplish something incredibly rare which is allowing those in chairs or with limited mobility to experience first-person viewing at the eyepiece of a world-class astronomical instrument. 
At the end of the ceremony, the physics department unveiled a surprise. Two stars within Ursa Minor, or the Little Dipper, named after Barbara and Sam to honor their devotion to SHSU and the beyond. This addition to the university will serve as a symbol for furthering scientific research, accessibility for all, and of course, a genuine statement of, quote, I love you to the moon and back. The Domini Observatory is set to open in Huntsville in the fall of 2023 semester on the campus of Sam Houston State University, Macy McShann, Bearcat Student Media. Coming up, getting timely medical attention in an emergency can mean life or death. Find out how many times EMS responded to an emergency on campus call last year. The proud son of hardworking immigrant parents, Eric Rodas chose to serve his country. A father, a soldier, and now a college graduate. He proved that circumstances have nothing to do with your outcome. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Eric determine their future. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Third generation Bearcat, Tacey Webb, roped her way to a national championship through her hard work and fearless dedication. Trading her saddle for nursing scrubs, Tacey set her sights in another arena, a place where she can champion the needs of others. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Tacey reach their championship potential. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. You're watching Bearcat Student Media News, a production at the Mass Communications Department at Sam Houston State University, only right here on Channel 7. Recent coverage of stories involving medical emergencies has led some SHSU students to question if they can get to a medical facility in the event of emergency. Mm -hmm. Walker County Emergency Medical Services is critical to ensure patients reach emergency care in the golden hour, a 60 minute window, which is um, for patients who have the greatest chance of survival. We started training last year um, pretty heavily on MCI training, mass casualty incidents. Um, and that training varies anywhere from um, multi-vehicle car accidents all the way to like a shooting situation. Our crews, they really, um, they have a lot of support from command staff and their supervisors to make the best decisions for their patient. Walker County EMS responded to 73 on-campus emergency calls last year. Also, you coordinate training for organizations or businesses by calling them at 936-295-4848. Since 1987, March has saluted the 50.5% of Americans who are March. women. Bearcat Student Media's Peyton Wilson tells us what the month means to faculty and students at Sam Houston State University. Sam Houston State recognizes Women's History Month. Celebrations on campus range from lectures to film screenings and slam poetry nights. The SHSU Center for Diversity and Intercultural Affairs observed the month by highlighting female faculty and staff and choosing I Am Malala as their book of the month. The Sam Houston Memorial Museum showcased their Ladies of Influence exhibit. While March is the month most people celebrate, Dr. Nancy Baker honors American women's history every day. But I'm glad if for other people it brings their thoughts to a part of history that many people still don't know much about, still don't pay much attention to, to women who've contributed something, um, or just to the female experience in American history. Though most recognize the significance of the month, others have a passion for memorializing women's history. SHSU sophomore Leah Torres says she celebrates to honor women who paved the path before her. Um, because I have rights and freedoms that women before me didn't have. I can be a lawyer if I want to. I can do whatever I want. March is almost over, but the festivities aren't finished just yet. The College of Social Sciences Women's Reproductive Rights panel will take place at 2 p.m. on the 31st. On the campus of Sam Houston State, Peyton Wilson, Bearcat Student Media. The First Generation Center welcomes back students returning from spring break with free food and stress-free activities. Last Tuesday, the First Gen Center hosted the event, Study with First Gen and the LSE. 
Free pizza was offered for students who came to study or enjoy the activities. The room was split in half for students to engage in activities such as crossword puzzles and coloring. The other side of the room called library hours had tutors to help students who may be struggling with subjects like math, writing, and science. The purpose of the event was for students who needed the extra push to finish the semester strong after feeling spring break fatigue. Storytelling through photography of Texas history can create an adventurous spirit. At the Katie and E. Dunn Walker Senior Education Center, photographers Morgan Page and Dustin Rice created a project named Bones of Texas. The exhibit features landscapes captured across Texas. In the photographs, they find inspiration in the debris left behind. The art piece that stood out to me was the Mary Allen um, Seminary College. Like She was the first black woman to have her own college. And I think that stood out to me because it's like, I know back then black women was always degraded and treated wrongfully and we had to fight for everything that we did. The Bones of Texas exhibit will be on display until May 7th. The gallery is open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and Sunday noon to 4.30 p.m. Still ahead, the conclusion to a popular competition here at SHSU. See who wowed the crowd and pulled down the top prize. And we'll have a mix of weather the next few days, but the temperatures will heat up. I'm forecaster Fatima Maldonado, and I'll have your full weather picture after the break. Sam Houston Memorial Fuel Home was established in September of 2003. Our partnership with the Small Business Development Center is just like our partnership with other vendors in our community. We developed a marketing plan, a strategic analysis, as well as social media presence. If you let them, they can take your dream, put it to paper. That's the way we got started, and 13 years later, we're very happy to be a part of this community. I enjoy seeing kids, regardless of their age, see the light bulb go on and they have that aha moment. In 1997, I started Tomorrow's Promise, the Montessori School of Huntsville with three students. The Small Business Development Center helped me with classes on how to open a business. We also helped Kay market through social media, website analysis, and develop funding opportunities. We have grown to 38 teachers and over 220 students. Good afternoon, Huntsville and Sam Houston State University students. I'm Fatima Maldonado with your local forecast. It's currently 68 degrees in Huntsville with cloudy skies throughout the day. The humidity is at 45%, winds at 7 miles an hour with the feels like temperature at 68. Around the region, Centerville is at 67 degrees. College Station comes in at 68 as well. Grove 10 is at 68 degrees also. Livingston checks in at 69, Conroe 69, and finally Hardin checks in at 70. Statewide, El Paso is seeing a temperature of 59 degrees with sunny skies, in Lubbock 58 degrees, San Antonio is a cool 63 degrees, and in Brownsville it's a warmer 70 degrees. Around the nation, it's 53 degrees in New York, 39 in Chicago, and 87 down in Miami. Denver is a bit cool at 56 degrees, and lastly in LA it's 60 degrees. For tomorrow, we'll wake up to a temperature of 62 degrees in Huntsville. Sunrise will be at 7.13 a.m. with cloudy skies. Winds from the northwest at 8 miles an hour. Humidity will be at 65%. The five-day forecast for Huntsville, tomorrow the high is 76 with a low of 55. Friday has a high of 83 and a low of 68. Saturday also with a high of 83. Sunday 74 with rain expected. And Monday has a high of 87 with a low of 70 and a 20% chance of rain. And that's it from the Bearcat Student Media Weather Center. I'm Fatima Maldonado and have a great rest of your day. Time for this week's Ag Report. Here's Bearcat Student Media's Justin Hardcastle highlighting today's commodity prices. Good afternoon, Bearcats. Let's take a look at that Bearcat Ag Report. 
Corn prices are up 1.35% and they're coming in at 6.56 a bushel. Cotton prices are down 0.13% coming in at 82 cents per pound. Wheat prices are up 2.47% at $270 per ton. Live cattle are up 0.26% at $1.65 per pound. And finally, those feeder cattle are up a little at 0.04% at $1.92 per pound. And that's going to do it for this week's Ag Report. We'll see you back here next week. Bingo, but with a musical twist. The SHSU Program Council hosted Singo Bingo Night in the LSC Orange Ballroom recently. Organizers invited students to play free bingo, eat popcorn, and win various prizes. Students had to show their IDs to take part in the event. When a player matched a song playing over the speakers onto their single card, they won a prize. The event allowed students to de-stress in the middle of a hectic semester. I like playing bingo, but I never win. But I also play for the St. Houston Club volleyball team. What made you decide to come to bingo this night? Um, actually, to uh, take a break from studying. I have anatomy test tomorrow. Have you won any prizes yet tonight? Yes. I won the uh, pool float. I don't think it's a koala bear. I don't really know. Many say Singo Bingo was a fun night for students. The next bingo night will be held in the same location on Wednesday, April 5th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. And after posting the most wins in program history this season, the horn has sounded for a popular Bearcat coach. I'm Bearcat student media sportscaster Justin Hardcastle, and I'll have that story and more coming up after the break. The proud son of hardworking immigrant parents, Eric Rodas chose to serve his country. A father, a soldier, and now a college graduate. He proved that circumstances have nothing to do with your outcome. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Eric determine their future. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Third generation Bearcat, Tacey Webb, roped her way to a national championship through her hard work and fearless dedication. Trading her saddle for nursing scrubs, Tacey set her sights in another arena, a place where she can champion the needs of others. Since 1879, we've been helping students like Tacey reach their championship potential. Sam Houston State University, a great name in education. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Justin Hardcastle with your Bearcat Student Media Sports. On Friday, men's basketball coach Jason Hooten accepted a job officer from, offer from New Mexico State University. The two parties were reportedly in talks as early as Thursday, March 16th. Hooten said it was a tough decision to move on from Huntsville after accepting the job offer. He was the Bearcats head coach since 2011, leading them to an overall record of 261 and 160. New Mexico State Aggies men's basketball program was suspended after two off-court incidents, which led to the firing of the previous head coach. Hooten's new contract with NMSU will reportedly pay him more than $425,000 which is almost double his previous base salary of $232,000. It's unclear right now who will replace Hooten, but Sam Houston put their best seasons together under him, finishing with 26 wins and a 14-4 and conference record. Bearcat Baseball wrapped up their three-game series against Grand Canyon Sunday with a 4-2 victory. Jason Tautum got the Cats going offensively when he drew a leadoff walk in the second inning. He was then able to advance to third by way of double by Miles Jefferson. Lane Brewster would give the Cats their first run of the game with an infield single. Walker Yannick would put another run on the board for the Cats with a sacrifice fly to right field. Grand Canyon would get a run back in the bottom of the second inning. The game in the fifth inning, but Logan Hewitt would come into the Bearcats' rescue and throw four shutout innings. The Bearcats got the game-clinching run in the sixth to give them a 3-2 lead with a single up the middle. They would add an insurance run later on. They take two of three from Grand Canyon and have moved to improve on to 15-10 and 10 on the season. A lot of excitement on the field and the Diamonds in the coming weeks. I'm Justin Hardcastle, and that's a wrap on sports.
They hit their last note, and now we have a winner. The finale of Battle of the Bands headlined Tuesday night in the Orange Ballroom of the LSC. Bands competed head-to-head -head for the chance to win big. The competition began March 7th, welcoming four bands of varying genres to battle it out in the elimination round. The band performed two songs each and were critiqued by a panel of four judges. Three bands advanced and played their hearts out in the finals on Tuesday. And the winner, The News, who pulled down the grand prize of $2,000, We'll have more on Battle of the Bands next week. That'll do it for us this week at Bearcat Student Media News. I'm Chasmin Parker. And I'm Talia Harrell. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here next week.